Um, and this is a good place to introduce this concept of an edge case. There's uh, certain concepts of like uh, the common case, uh, which is maybe the general case. Um, uh, for example, like with a list, if you're writing some function that takes in a list, a list of numbers and maybe adds them all up or averages them. The common case is a list with numbers, whether there's three numbers or four numbers or five numbers or 10 numbers, probably your code behaves the same way. So that's the common case. But an edge case is a type, uh, one of the input values that requires special consideration. And so for example, in a function that finds the average of the numbers in a list, an empty list would be an edge case. You'd want to make sure that for some unusual thing that you know has some weird behavior to it, which for an empty list is the fact that the list has a length of zero, you want to think about that case carefully. And sometimes you want to handle it carefully. So sometimes when you find an edge case, the best way to fix your code is to write a special case, special conditional at the top of your function that just handles that edge case. Sometimes we call these boundary conditions or corner cases. Uh, and oftentimes, so like, for things that take integers, zero is a special condition, or an empty string for something that takes a string, or an empty list. Um, but depending on the problem, it might be uh, something different. So it's problem specific. And you'll hear people, especially in industry, talk about test coverage. And so the goal of test coverage is to make sure that uh, when you're testing some machine, the inputs that you choose to test uh, cover a wide enough range of the behavior of your machine for you to have confidence that the machine works fully correctly. So, and so like maybe with speakers, if you turn them on and you play some music that like, I don't know, maybe some classical music that doesn't have much bass, they sound fine. But if you don't try some other genres that have other kinds of sounds, maybe you want to try listening to some like, techno music, something that has kind of a lot of bass. Uh, maybe actually like the bass part of the speakers is broken and you wouldn't have caught that if you didn't try enough different kinds of music that they cover the full spectrum of different sounds that you expect to produce. So <laughs> going back to this uh, vending machine, it actually has a lot of different edge cases that we can think of. For example, consider, okay, uh, giving the exact amount of money, valid code, that's all common. But when you're testing, you also want to think about inputs that might break your machine. So for example, what if you give an invalid code? What does your machine do? It should give back the money, right? It should handle that kind of error gracefully. Or what if you give a valid code, but the the there's no like the soda's out for that particular number then you should still get your money back um if you give no money and you just put in a code you shouldn't get soda um and probably you should get your money uh oh well you didn't give money so yeah you don't get anything back if you put only some money in but not enough you shouldn't get a soda you should get your money back you should get change if you use coins that aren't valid you should uh get your coins back but no soda um so on and so forth. So there are all, the, all of these edge cases, like honestly, maybe the way I would think about this is these here would be the common cases. You could just make sure that, okay, with the right amount of money and a valid code, we get soda. But all of these other things down here are edge cases. It's not a hard and fast distinction. Um, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, you, you, you won't be wrong if you call something an edge case. Uh, or something, uh, the common case, but it's it's a mental kind of way of thinking about how to break a problem down, its possible inputs into pieces, into segments. And so, so far in this class, uh, I have been writing all of these tests for you. Um, for all the homework assignments, for all the labs, Vijay and I have been writing these tests for you. Um, and we test your code, you'll notice there are multiple test cases per assignment because we pass in different arguments and check that the different uh, expected value, the, the different return values are what was actually expected. So let's give it a try. Uh, remember your absolute value function, which is one we wrote very early on. Um, 
An absolute value just returns the absolute value of a number. What are the test cases that you need to cover all the possible cases? So if we were in class, I'd cold call on you uh, or, or ask people to raise their hands. But one case that we should definitely try is a positive number. So the number 10, the absolute value of 10 is 10. Uh, you'll notice we don't need to try any other positive values because probably if our code works for 10, it also works for 9, it also works for 11. It's very unlikely for us to have an error with just one positive number, but not the other positive numbers. Of course, the other case we need to try is the general case of all the negative numbers. So negative 100, the absolute value should be 100. And if it works for negative 100, it probably works for negative 99 or negative 200. But one of the edge cases here is we want to make sure that the absolute value of 0 is 0. That's kind of a corner case or an edge case, because it's kind of weird. It's on the boundary between positives and negatives. Um, well, here's another example. Uppercase. Uh, this is a function that returns a given string all in uppercase letters. So what test cases should we try to make sure that our function works correctly? What are all the possible cases we should try? Well, we could start with the case where everything is uppercase. Um, and then we should return, uh, we should just return the string as it was because it was already all uppercase. Maybe we want to make sure that it works for a mix, so any kind of mix. We don't have to try capital A, lowercase b, capital C, and then capital A, capital B, lowercase c. One single string that is a mix of upper and lowercase is enough for us to probably believe that our function works for that whole class of input. We'll try all lowercase. Of course, a common edge case is an empty string, so do you handle an empty string correctly? Um, what if it's not even characters? What should it do with numbers? Does it actually return the numbers back correctly? Same thing for all of the non-characters. Punctuation, that's a whole other class. And finally, maybe we'd mix all these together to see if there's something weird that happens. 